What's good with the YouTube of Conflicts Perspective? It's your boy Flacco with my co-host, Big Senor Rojo, with a whole lot of energy, man. We got an interesting guest today, Mr. Jesse De La Cruz, also known as, from a previous life, as Draggy or Dragon. How you doing, brother? I'm good, bro. And and by the way, it's now Dr. <laughs> Dr. Jesse <laughs> De La Cruz. Right. That's right. I got to correct, you know, like I'll be on the stand sometimes and the district attorney will try to get away with that shit. And I put him in check immediately, right? I they're, had, trying, I, they're trying to belittle you right there. So you're like, you know, they, you know, they like, they think they're better. You know what I mean? Yep. So, and and the judge one time did that and I put him in check. I told him, well, I don't call you Mr. I call you your honor, right? I've earned the right to be called Dr. Dela Cruz. That's my title. That's right, bro. He's like, all right, you know, I think he felt stupid. But either way, anyway, and I, I don't say that to be um, like all trying to attempt to be all that, right? The truth of the matter, it was, it was a, the most difficult thing that I ever did next to leaving the Nuestra Familia. That was, that was it. Those two things. Okay. So I have a, a comparison. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So, so let me let me begin by uh, talk, talking a little bit about who I am, where I come from, and so forth and so on, right? So I grew up in a little town in Tulare County. They call it TC now. We never called it that, but now they call it that, right? It's uh, Now they got a car. They, when I went to the penitentiary in 1972, um, there was only like five or six of us in the whole fucking system, right? But again, there was only 13,000 700 individuals in the whole penitentiary system in the CDCR in 1972. Wow. So it's, you know, right? Anyway, so I got to the pen. I, I got in in the NF um, in, in June of 1973. So I was like in the second phase, you know what I mean? The first phase happened 68, 69, 70, 71, I would imagine. And then the next phase was 72, 73, 74. Uh, and then it stopped for a minute there because they locked us all up, right? As a result of a killing in DVI on June 27th of November 27th of 1973, a cop, right? So I have a whole lot of history, bro. And, and one thing that I want to touch upon, right? And I don't want to dog the dude, but you know, I, I listen to Mundo. I listen to him. I know the guy, right? He says, you know, praise God and hallelujah and all that. Okay, cool. That's good. But you can't even show your face. And you haven't been around in a long, long time. You haven't been around since I remember I was there when they snatched him up in March of 1979 from Cypress segregation when they came in the middle of the night like a thief and, and took him out. So he can go testify and all that. And that's fine, bro. He can do what he wants to do. But don't be saying things that you, you know, you're talking about things like that are happening now. How do you know? You're in Pennsylvania, some fucking place. How would you know? You're not connected to the M anymore. You're not connected to that. You know what I mean? So it's a money making thing. And it also puts people on the spot. I don't want to put people on the spot. And if he if he sees this and he hears this, he can call me. It's cool. We can talk. I don't have a problem with that. You know what I mean? I know his homeboy, Sailor Boy. I was with him in the penitentiary. I know all them dudes. You know what I mean? Because I was with him, right, in the pen. Right? So anyway, to make a long story short, you know, I can go on and on, but I was there when the first thing that North and South thing happened. I heard Hobo the other day say, well, <laughs> you know, he said, well, it happened in like 79. No, it happened in the summer of 1973. That's when it happened. And I can tell you the story if you guys want to hear the story. Let's hear it. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. What happened was there was a, okay, every, like Hobo alluded to this too. At that time, back then, we were all being raised together, bro. 
we were all raised, whether you were from LA, San Diego, Chino, wherever, and, and San Jose and in San Francisco and whatever. And we were all being raised together because we would end up in youth authority and all those places as youngsters. And we developed friendships because we were the same, bro. We were the same, especially the guys from Maravilla. They, they, they like, you know, we, you know, I used to tell them, hey, Holmes, you like all these goodies? Hell yeah. Yeah, you like Corona. Well, we didn't have Corona back then, <clears throat> but you like <clears throat> fine bitches. Hell yeah, you know you like you know rancheras. Que barbaro. Okay, who we do too? You know we like them too. So we're the same. We used to say that back in the day, right? <clears throat> Except, of course, then that all that happened. So anyway, in the summer of 1973, there was a guy named Spider from Wilmas. He was a nut, bro. Motherfucker was crazy. You know, he was a mental case. And he came to DVI and he went straight to the hole. So he was in the first tier, right, in K-Wings. And Sharky from Salinas, I never knew Sharky. I never met him personally, but he was a carnal. He was an NF guy. You know, I, I was in the NF, but, I, you know, at the time, I had just got in, right? So I didn't- Filipino Sharky? I don't know if he was Filipino or not, right? But he was, you know, he was uh, at that time, right? He was, I don't remember, you know, because I never met him personally. He was in the hole, I was in the main line, right? But nevertheless, I knew of him, you know? I knew who he was by name, not by characteristics and all that, demographics or ethnicity, whatever. Okay, so what happened was, uh, you know, they knew, Shark, Shark and Spider knew each other. They had, they had been in Youth Authority together. And so they were on, he was on the tier, Spider was on the tier and they were talking, home, they were squatted down and they were talking. And this is secondhand information, right? What is fact is that he killed Sharky. Spider killed him through the bars, boom. He offered him a cigarette and, and you know, Sharky went for the cigarette and homeboy hit him, bam. And he got him in the heart and killed him. Okay. Now, Pato, who was Sharky's older brother, was on the main line and he panicked. He panicked. And so he got three or four dudes that were from at, you know, Los Angeles somewhere, you know what I mean? And they attacked Pablito from Fresno and Baby Goose from uh, Gilroy, right? Pablito had been hit at, at Sierra by a, a guy named Gus Rivera, uh, a mafioso, right? And he had paralyzed the dude from part of his body, right? So he walked with a cane and he called him Pablito because he was small and he was paralyzed on top of that, right? Baby Goose, they called him Baby Goose because he was the baby of the NF. He was just 18 years old. He had birth or 19 maybe, just turned 19, right? And they had been walking down the corridor and uh, have you been to DVI? Yeah. Okay, so you two, uh, uh, Rojo? See, si, yes. Okay. So then you know right there in control when you make the turn to go to the yard, right, right by where the laundry is, they moved on these two, these vatos, Pato and them moved on Baby Goose and and Sharky. I mean, and uh, Pablito. It was a PC move. Really. They didn't hurt nobody, but you know the cops were there. They hated boom, 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 and you know they locked them up. Right. That was on a Thursday. The following day, the NN said, "Oh, okay, motherfuckers." They said, you want to play that shit? So the following day, anybody that was associated with those guys got hit. So they hit like six guys. <laughs> they didn't kill them. They just like, you know, I just, they just hurt them. You know what I mean? They wasn't really, I don't think, I don't think they were trying to uh, kill them. I wasn't in, in the, I wasn't on the yard at the time. I was, uh, I was working and uh, I wasn't a trade. I was uh, doing the shoe repair, you know what I mean? For the Bonner rules and shit to make money. Anyway. So the next day was a Saturday after the hit. And you gotta remember that back then they didn't lock us up, bro. They could kill three or four motherfuckers in one day. It don't matter, pick up the body, let's go program, let's go. Resume, pro, whatever. Okay, oh man, all right, hold on. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, you there? I just had a call, that's why. That's from a, a dude that just dropped out of the NF. Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, well, last year. Anyway, so, so what happened was, um, what happened, bro? Uh, 
Um, oh yeah, the following, I was excited because I was gonna get a visit. And at that time they used to bring in, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of outside shows, you know what I mean? And you know, they always brought them brides that used to dance and shit, right? In the little fucking short skirts and, you know, they were usually big old piernudas, you know what I mean? And we would be like, uh, you know, hot dog, you know, in the gym, right? It was such a stage and all that. And I was going to get a visit. I was going to get some dope. So the Saturday morning, I was going to go to, we went to Chow. And back then, they, they used to, people were going back from Chow and we were going to Chow, you know? So it was like, like this, the traffic, you know what I mean? Crisscrossing each other. And so I was in ceiling. And I went to, I, I waited up on, on uh, Shadow from Fresno, uh, Crackers' brother. And I said, to go to Chow. So we went to, we were going to Chow and he told me, hey, mucho cuidado, you know, be careful. You know, todos, the, there's a lot of shit going on right now, right? You know, me young, stupid. Nah, I wasn't stupid, just like egotistical, I guess. I told him, man, fuck that shit. This is our fucking penitentiary, what the fuck, you know? And I had just come from Folsom, bro. So, you know, I had stabbed him. It was, so I was in like, fuck, what the fuck are they gonna do to me here, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> they didn't get to do it in fucking Folsom, right? <laughs> anyway, so so at that moment, they cut Shadow. He goes into the other chow hall. I, I, I go into one, one chow hall. And, you know, I eat breakfast and I come out. And then I'm walking back to the, to the, to the unit to get ready for my visit. And I run into this dude they called Cuervo from Pico Viejo. Now I knew Cuervo, you know, he wasn't an enemy. He wasn't a friend, but he was a guy that we played handball against. You know what I mean? So I knew him. So as I'm walking I'm down uh, from the chow hall towards control, um, he's walking and I, I should have paid attention. I didn't pay attention, but he was real pale. They called him Cuervo because he's dark, right? But he was pale. I know that I realized it later, but I didn't at the time. I was like, I was, I was too excited, too distracted by, you know, the getting going to get heroin and all that shit, right? Yeah. So he, he stopped me as I passed. He, he goes, hey, Holmes. I go, que paso? And he said, uh, were you on the yard yesterday when uh, when they hit them dudes? And I said, nah. And then me being stupid, I told him, who who, who was it? And he told me who they were. And I go, ah, esa pinche bola de putos. That's what I said, right? <laughs> they were his friends, right? <laughs> so to him, they were putos. Now, what I didn't know at the time was that as soon as he got back to J-Wing, they were going to kill him. Now, he was going to get killed, that one, because he was instrumental in a lot of shit that was going on. But, you know, you're on a need-to-know basis, and they, they don't tell you everything, you know? Right. So I'm walking, and there's a dude named Chato from Stockton. He just died a couple of years ago. He used to, you know, I used to clown him, puto, you know, like that, you, you know, coming on the on the yard, on the corridor. But for some reason, I kept my eye on this dude peripherally, right? And when I'm I'm talking to this dude, this motherfucker, he comes up with a fucking piece. He's going for my neck, homes. And so I hit, you know, what? Boom, 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 boom. The next thing I know, we're against the wall. There's blood on the wall. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is this motherfucker? Did he stab me? Because I couldn't tell, right? And the cop, is yelling, where are you from? I don't know what the fuck he's asking. What, you know, like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? I never heard that from a cop. He goes, where are you from? I said, what are you talking about, man? He goes, are you from Northern California or Southern California? I said, Northern California. He said, that's what I thought. Oh. And so they locked us up, right? But he took the blame and he told them that, that, uh, that he had done that because that he was going to get killed. And basically he just, like a PC move, I guess, right? He, he didn't say that, but that's what he did, right? Yeah. Like they, he picked on me because I walked with a limp and I guess he thought he could whip me. I don't know what the fuck he thought, but you know, that's cool. He didn't do nothing. Okay. And so there, I mean, I never heard any, anything more about North South, you know what I mean? But now, now remember that happened like in August. August of, um, of of 73. So in November, they lock us all up, bro. All of us, everybody. I have never in my life seen so many cops ever. There was like, like 50 fucking COs and 10 captains and 
I don't know how many fucking lieutenants and sergeants. There was probably a hundred cops in each fucking unit, right? I swear to God. And they were lined up shoulder to shoulder in the middle, you know, that two orange red lines or whatever, all the way. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) And then, and so they just said, okay. And anybody that was black, they were in trouble, bro, because of my, the BGF killed them, the, the cop, right? And so everybody that was black, that was anybody, whatever, even a suspicion, you know, I seen a dude named this, call him Squadubi. They pulled his ass out and they beat him down and took him out. I never seen that motherfucker again. I don't know what they did, you know what I mean? Yeah. But they serious, bro. And so that's when all the... The NF, that's just what I believe. There was two things that were really instrumental in the NF destroying itself, I think, at that time. One was they passed a directive, you can't use heroin. Get the fuck out of here. How are you going to tell a heroin addict you can't use heroin? That doesn't make no sense. I'm in the penitentiary for shooting heroin. You know, not for shooting heroin, but for getting breaking into houses and shit to get money to shoot heroin, right? right? That's why I'm there, right? The next thing is when we, when they lock everybody up, they start, they're going to clean house. Wow. What does that cause? Fucking paranoia, right? Because I don't know what you've done. As far as I know, you're a good dude. Right. But something hit you. And you're gone. And I'm like, well, what the fuck? He was, uh, well, why? Because they're not explaining nothing. They're not telling the fellas, hey, well, you know, he got hit because, you know, whatever, right? They're not saying nothing like that. So that's what happens, right? So I, when that starts happening, they're going to hit my homeboy. I'm not going to allow it, all. <laughs> you know, fuck all that. Like, nah, hell no. I'm not going to stand by. Fuck you. But they tell me, you know what, we're going to move on here. We're going to take him out. I said, all right, cool. So I tell my home, I, first thing I tell him is we're in West Hall, you know, in, 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 in the MCU. And we go to the yard and I tell him, hey, Holmes, don't fucking panic, okay? The first fucking thing he does is fucking panic, right? What the fuck? You know? I told him, God damn, home, I just finished time. I'm right here. I got two here. I got you a piece. I got a piece. If they come, fuck it. We'll just take off. That's it. But they didn't hit him, you know what I mean, that day. They were going to, but they didn't do it on that day. So we go back. The next morning, he comes out to child, and he comes to my door, and he tells me I'm gone, man. And so I tell him, all right, man, you know, cool. Whatever you decide, it's fine, you know. Are we still friends? Of course we're friends, huh? As long as you ain't telling, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? If that's what you want to do, that's, that's on you, you know. So he left. So so I, I seen a, a couple of hits that were fucking terrible terrible of our own for stupid reasons right and i made a decision at that time that if i didn't catch a a, a life sentence if i didn't catch a life sentence when i got out i was gonna walk away but if i caught a life sentence i'm stuck i would be like pinky you know what i mean because, you know, I mean, that's just the way it was. You know, what am I going to, I'm, I'm not going to testify. I'm not going to tell, you know what I mean? I'm just, I made a decision. I, um, you know, I'm going to honor the decision as long as I can, right? But then, you know, uh, you know, once I got out, I said, fuck this, man. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be killing people for, for what? This doesn't make any sense. We had lists upon lists upon lists upon lists of individuals for insignificant bullshit. I told Bobo back then, let the motherfuckers walk, leave if they want to leave. They're not, they're not, you know, they're not hurting us. Fuck them. You know what I mean? When the time comes, hey, whatever, man. Don't go looking for the motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Unless they're testifying, okay, well, that's different. But if they want to leave, let them leave. You know what I mean? Even in fucking the army, if you want to, if you want to get out of the army, you know, they'll let you. They'll get, It's a dishonorable discharge, but, you know, they'll let you. You know what I mean? They don't kill you because you want to leave. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um. Anyway, 
I go in and out of the penitentiary for the following 25 years. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I hit every main line. I was, and I'm not saying this because I'm a tough guy. I don't know why I didn't get killed. Because I went, I was in the LA County Jail probably 15, 20 times on the general population. And I seen guys that knew me and who I was. But I know why they didn't say anything. Because <laughs> if they say something, then, then they're going to give him the, here, then you take it. You, you know, fuck that. I'm not doing that shit. You know what I mean? Right. So what happened was I was living in L.A. And I was selling dope in Maravilla. And as you guys probably know, Maravilla at that time didn't like, you know, they didn't like me. Anymore. Although they have a lot of dudes from Maravilla that are fucking mafiosos. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, not a lot, but they have some, you know, from Eloyo, you know. Most of them are from Eloyo. Um, anyway, I was over there. So basically what they did was they embraced me more, pretty much. You know what I mean? But, you know, when they would ask me, where are you from? I would say, I live in Maravilla. I made it clear. I'm not from Maravilla, but I live there. So where are you from? I'm from Northern California. And they would say, uh, fuck it, you're all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, cool. You yeah, know. Let, me ask, let me ask you a quick question, right? Go ahead. Um, who were some of the most influential NF members and what was your experiences with them back in, in those days? See, Baba was number one, Holmes. Baba took me under his wing. That motherfucker taught me a lot of shit. Uh, a guy named Pretty Rudy, Rudy Perez, from uh, Clanton, he 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 was a good motherfucker. They hit him too. Um, Perico uh, from Larry Saldivar from Salinas. Um, he was a captain at that time. Um, I, I knew Fig and all them, but they were all in the hole. I was not in the hole. I was I was in the management control unit, right? Um, you know, Galletas. Galletas was a fucking bully, though. You know what I mean? Shadow was instrumental like a motherfucker his brother you know yeah. shadow um shadow was a bad motherfucker he you know he was really a bad motherfucker man um, Mindiola, right Mindiola, yeah yeah i don't know if he's dead I, I i don't know i don't think so he got out you know but he was a good dude man um Guate, gilbert requejo from porterville he's dead now um there was a lot of dudes, bro. I mean, we were, there was a lot of love. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? And there was a lot of good dudes that, and everybody was a killer almost <laughs> back then. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, you, in fact, you, you know, you had to do that. You know what I mean? At right, you know, to be able to get in. Right. Um, like, you know, I talk about it in my book when I got in, I hit that dude, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say, you know, because they always ask me about it. And I would say, well, he didn't die. You know what I mean? But not because I didn't try to kill him. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, they, you know, I knew, uh, like, there was a lot of good dudes, man. It was, you know. What about the MA? What, what was your experience with, like, the, the mafiosos back then? <laughs> okay, watch this, bro. Rebel from Eloyo was my boy. In 1969, I was in the the Hall of Justice Jail, right? And me and him got really tight. He wasn't in the MA yet, but he went, right after that, he had a robbery and he went to the pen and he got in, right? But that motherfucker loved me, bro, right? Um, A.B. Hernandez from Sacramento, right? That motherfucker, me and him ran together in the guiding center because I didn't know he was in the MA. But I remember everybody, you know, looking back at it, right? Everybody used to look at me like, what the fuck, right? And I'd be like, what the fuck, you know, what's happening, man? And then one day I'm sitting with him by the handball court and he tells me, he says, hey, uh, he says, um, you're going to get in. And I, what are you talking about, man? He goes, yeah, you're probably going to get in with a familia. And I go, we'll see. I didn't say nothing. I just said, we'll see. But it turns out he was a mafioso. There was another dude named Eli Trevino from Modesto that I ran with at that time in the, in the, on the main line, he was a mafioso, right? But I knew Guito and Robo, I knew all them motherfuckers, right? All of them, you know what I mean? 
the, I had interactions with all of them. When I stabbed uh, uh, a dude from LA in the LA County Jail, they put me in the hole in the what they call 1700s, right? 1750 at that time. They put me on the fucking tier with, with Joe Morgan and Champ and Blackie and this fucking pendejo, what's his name? Uh, uh, Rene Boxer Enriquez. You know, all them putos were there, right? And and they, I was like scared to death, homes. Come on, you know, I'm on the tier, like son of a bitch, man. <laughs> this, right? Because one of the dudes, that dude was uh the brother of Cuate and um and Wino, right? From Rajeda. From yeah, from the from the Rana. And so, you know, I got a lot of stories on Tati, Victor Murillo, all the Victor was my mentor. Cause when I was a kid, you know, Victorio. But he went to the pen and got in the Emmy. So when I got out, you know, I went to my neighborhood. I mean, I'm from Woodlake. You know what I mean? I'm not from Visalia, I'm from Woodlake, but I ran in Visalia. And I went to my homeboy's house and my homeboy had a lot of dope, a lot. Pounds and shit, right? This is Mexico, from, from Mexico. And Victor was there to put the squeeze on and that's what he was gonna do. So I, when I get there, he goes, but I did, and I go, ¿Qué pasó? And I, you know, I had a gun, but he had a gun too. You know what I mean? And I go, ¿Qué pasó? And he says, ¿Qué estás haciendo aquí? What are you doing here, right? And I go, I live here, motherfucker. What you doing here? Right? And he goes, hey, he goes, I want to talk to you, man. I go, well, wait a minute. Let me get, I'll be right back. And when it started fixed, came out, I go, what's up? So we went out, he went to my, we went to my car and he goes, look, man. I'm not gonna do no le voy a hacer, you know, I'm not gonna do them putos the favor, like in other words, kill me, right? He goes, as long as you don't fuck with me or my homeboys, my friend, my carnales, I don't have a problem with you, right? And so I told him, look, Victor, I don't like you motherfuckers anyway, right? I'm not in no more, right? But that doesn't change that I have to, you know, how I feel about you people, right? So as long as you don't come to fucking Woodley, I don't give a fuck what you're doing by saying that. And then we don't have a problem. He goes, what happened? And that was it, right? So Tati, I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. Tati, homegirl, right? <laughs> Pita. And Pita, I went to school with her in the first grade. You know? I, she got involved with Spendejo, you know, anyway. So one day I bump into his punk ass, right? In Visalia. And uh, he had a knife in his back pocket, but I had a knife too, right? And I go, que paso? And he goes, I want to talk to you. And I go, well, talk, homes. What you waiting on? See, but Tati wasn't a tough guy. Tati will kill you. But he wasn't a tough guy. He'll kill you from behind. You know what I mean? But he's not going to come at you direct if there's a possibility that he's going to get hurt. He's dead now, so it don't matter, right? Anyway, he um, he tells me the same thing, right? Hey, you know, I'm not going to do them no favors, ooh, all that shit, right? I said, okay. Well, as long as you don't fuck with my homeboys, I don't care what you do. Two days later, we're in the county jail, bro. And him, Choco, fucking Mike Moreno, Boo Boo, fucking um, uh, Conejo, and Tati, and somebody else. There was six of them. They're in the fucking tank. And they put me in the same fucking tank with these motherfuckers, right? In the county jail. <laughs> you think I was scared? Fuck, I was scared. So I look and I go, son of a bitch, man. I'm not going to bang on the door, homes. You know what I mean? What the fuck am I going to do? So I got a couple of homeboys there, but they're like looking at me. And I, I mean, I get it. They're fucking scared, you know? It's not their beef, right? So I'm not waiting for them to jump in for me. And these guys, you know, they can stop me to death right now, right? Because they don't need a knife to kill me. I'm not that fucking big, you know? There's six of them motherfuckers and they're all monsters, except for that bitch, that fucking clown. But anyway, he tells me, he, Tati tells me, but I lay. And I go, ¿Qué pasó? And he goes, he looks at me and he goes, no te paniques. <laughs> and I tell him, hey, well, and if you were in my position, would you panic? And then he looked at me and he goes, eh, yeah, I guess I would. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, right? So, you know, I mean, I had a lot of interactions with them, you know, Topo, all them dudes, right? But you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, it, it, they're not any different than us, Holmes. 
I don't know where this about to get out that, you know, that they killed a lot of us and que sabe que chingados, right? And um, I don't know who killed more. But what's the fucking difference, man? People were it's getting all, killed, straight up. It's all bullshit. Yeah. Right? It don't mean nothing. You can't go to the bank and say, hey, man, I just killed a Farmero, you know, <laughs> $1,000, right? Yeah. I can't go to the bank and say, hey, man, you know, I just stabbed this motherfucker. You know, he's a buster. Can I get, like, $50,000 because I did that? They're going to say, they're going to call the police and put my ass in jail. That's what they're going to do. Correct? Yeah, no doubt, man. So, most definitely. anyway, so, yeah, you know, so, you know, I, I have respect for people on a personal note, bro. And, and let me tell you, you know, like, I didn't do straight. I did 30 years, but in and out. I didn't do it. But see, what, what, what people don't understand, bro, is that when an individual like myself, you know, you go, you do nine, you get out, you do five, you get out, you do three, you get out, whatever, right? But when you get out, you're living tunnel view because I'm a heroin addict, bro. So that's all I'm concerned with. I'm not living mainstream. I'm not living, I'm not following and adhering to the rules of the land. I'm, I'm, I'm adhering and following the rules of, of the criminal lifestyle. So either way, I'm not learning anything. I'm just, I'm in the dark. I don't know nothing about love. I don't know anything about work. I don't know anything about college. I don't know a goddamn thing about a career. I don't know anything about anything, right? Yeah. So when I make that move, when I make the transition and say, hey man, okay, man, I give. I don't know what the fuck to do. You know what I was gonna do? I was gonna turn myself in something that no self-respecting criminal would ever even consider. I was going to turn myself in all my life. I ran from these motherfuckers. And all of a sudden, I'm going to turn myself in because that's the only option I have. Right. But, but not to get bi biblical, God had another plan. And he put somebody in my path, and I ended up in a residential treatment center the next day. Right? Yeah. And that was June the 4th of 1996 and I haven't drank I haven't used no dope of any kind weed nothing I don't even like weed but whatever right nothing no chemicals nothing in my body I quit smoking a year later I don't smoke anymore you got 25 years then huh? a little over I'm going on 26 congratulations man congratulations. you know and, and let me tell you something bro did you for those of you the guys that are listening looking there's a lot of things people we are an extraordinary people man but we don't understand that we have an extraordinary amount of knowledge that we can use and and that we can use toward our benefits I'm gonna give you an example. I was, I'm a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. And one day, I, you know, they, when you go into Alcoholics, I hated it, bro. But I knew that I had to do whatever because I didn't know. So every time you go in, you, they have these readings that they do. About 15 minutes, you know. And in my mind, I would always think, son of a bitch. They're going to read that fucking shit again, man. Motherfucker, man. Guy didn't get it, right? Six months later, oh, okay, boom. Oh, I get it. Some of it, right? And then one day I heard somebody say, I mean, the readings says, our past will become our greatest asset. And I went, huh, okay. But I didn't know how, right? <clears throat> one day an attorney called me. I don't know how he found my name. I don't know. And he says, I'm so-and-so and, -so and I'd like to take you to lunch and propose a, a business proposition to you. And I said, okay. So I met the guy. Oh man, older dude, you know, old, very nice guy, right? He used to be the elected, the elected uh, district attorney for Sioux County. 
but now he was on a criminal side, you know, criminal def- on the defense side. Right. And so he said to me, you know, I was wondering if you wanted, if you would consider or, or interested in becoming a gang expert. And I said, hmm, well, I said, I know a little bit of something about gangs, but I've never, what would I have to do? And he says, well, you'd have to testify in court, blah, 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 blah. Well, I've never done it, but I'm sure I could. He goes, okay. He goes, I got a death penalty case up in Cisco County and uh, I'd like to hire you all, you know, get you funded, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I asked him, well, how much do I charge? Now look it. I don't know. I think most of us are the same, you know, in certain areas. I didn't think I was worthy, you know, really. Like, I didn't think anybody was worthy to get paid the amount of money that he said I should ask. <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how the fuck could I ask that much? <laughs> and I said, well, fuck it. He said it's all right, cool. So, you know, yeah. All right. We went, the district attorney attacked me, bro. I almost said, fuck you, bitch. You know, the fuck you think, you know, almost. But I had a, had enough schooling already to realize, okay, you can't do that. Right. Right. And so I just held my fucking tongue. And finally the judge go, okay, that's enough. He's qualified. Let's go. While they dismissed the gang allegations on after my testimony and all that, the guy went from death penalty. He got 13 years, bro. Ooh, nice. 13 fucking years. And he was a good, he was a white dude, right? Big yeah. motherfucker, that motherfucker. He was a corn fed. One of those guys that he was going to go to the AB holes. I know he was. But he, but God intervened in his life. That's what happened. He was in jail for about seven years fighting this case. He had gone and did a sentence in, in Susanville. And then he came back, back to Siskiyou. And, you know, he had over seven years of credit. But they told him, we'll give you 13 years, but we're not going to give you no, you got to start now. Mm. You know, but fuck, he had a death penalty. Hey, it goes from death penalty to life to 50 to, hey, yeah, you got to you got your blessings, yeah. Yeah, so he said, fuck, yeah. You know what his his last name was? Lifer. (laughs) You serious? I swear to God. Oh, wow. I'm going to pause this real quick, Dr. Okay.